All right, guys, let's talk about power series. We broke up chapter 8 into 8, 1 through 8, 6. And the reason we stopped there is because all of the infinite series we talked about through 8, 6, those were series of numerical terms. And we just had to decide, do these numbers add up to infinity or do they add up to some finite amount? Starting with 8, 7, um, we started talking about polynomials that would could become a series, and these series are functions. They have x's in them. They do, their values depend on what x equals. So we're not just looking at numbers anymore. And power series is when we really start to take these functions and extend them out um, as an infinite series. In 8, 7, we were dealing with Taylor polynomials, and we just usually did a fourth degree or fifth degree. But you could extend that pattern out and make it infinite, and that's really the point of what's going on in this latter half of chapter 8. So here is um, the definition of a power series. This would be a power series centered at zero. All right, a power series just has a series of terms, and each one has a power of x in it, x to the zero, x to the one, x to the two, and so on. And then the rest of the term is made up of some coefficient that would be determined by the formula. Our general form here just has a sub n in the formula, so we have the first co coefficient, the second, the third. And those will, like I said, depend on the particular series. So an example would be 1 plus x plus x squared or 2 factorial. And you probably, hopefully you recognize this from our Taylor polynomial talk. This is the infinite series for E. Okay, and notice it's not a, a series like we dealt with in the first um, six sections where we just had numbers and we decided does it converge or not converge. Um, and this, if you were to stretch it out to infinity, is the series for e to the x. So the coefficients are 1, 1, 1 half, 1 over 3 factorial, which would be 1 sixth, and so on. Power series can also have other centers, just like our Taylor polynomials could. If that's the case, we're going to slightly adjust our formula and we're going to make it x minus c to the n, just the, the way our polynomials did. And that's going to be our first coefficient. The first one is still a sub 0 because um, when we plug in um, 0 for n, that, that part just goes away anyway. The x minus c to the 0 just gives us a 1. Then we have a1 x minus c, and we have a2 times x minus c squared, and so on. So any Taylor polynomial that you formed that was centered somewhere other than the zero that wasn't a Maclaurin would look more like this. And if you extend it out, it becomes a power series because we have powers of x starting at zero, one, two, and so on. Okay, so let's look at another example. Here's really what we, um, our, our goal of the day. An example power series like one plus x plus x squared plus x cubed. This power series isn't just numbers. So when we talk about convergence or divergence, this one is centered at zero because we don't have x minus some number. It depends on what x we plug in whether or not it's going to converge. Whether, let me say that again, whether or not this series converges depends on what x is. Okay, it's not just like, you know, old stuff in sections 8, 1 through 8, 6, I would give you something like this. And you would say, okay, I know what that does. That converges because it's the alternating harmonic series. And period, the answer was over, it converges. That's not what it's like anymore. Where power series, it depends on what we plug in. So this is a nice basic example. This particular power series is geometric. And if we connect it to the basic geometric series, that'll help you understand how it sometimes converges and sometimes it doesn't. This is a geometric series that begins with 1, and it's multiplied by x every time. Now, if you recall, the sum of a geometric series is a1 over 1 minus r. So 
there that would tell us that this geometric series would converge to this sum but only under certain conditions if you also recall geometric series only recall only converge if r say the absolute value of r is less than one all right if r if we plug in like two for this particular series we get one plus two plus four plus eight and obviously that doesn't converge because the terms do not approach zero so what we're dealing with now is we're finding what x's make it converge. And for this particular one, this thing will converge on any values of x that are between negative 1 and 1. So this is a picture of our next term, which is going to be called an interval of convergence. Any values in here, we can plug into this series and get a convergent result. Any values outside of there, make it diverge, make it add up to infinity. Plug in 0.8, converges. Plug in 1.4, does not converge. All right, so that's just kind of the basics. Please understand what's going on here. Not a series of numbers, a series that's a function. Certain x's make it converge, certain ones do not. Okay. One of three things is going to be happening. Every power series that we deal with is going to act in one of these ways. They are all going to converge at their center. Okay, if you plug the center in, think about this power series up here. If I plug in 4x, the value of the center, then this becomes c minus c. This term's gone. c minus c, this term's gone. So that infinite series just collapses down to one term, and it's whatever a sub 0 is. So all power series, because of that, converge at their center. So one possibility is this. It doesn't converge anywhere other than the center. If you try to plug in any other x value, let's say this thing is centered at 2. You try to plug in 2.1 it's going to diverge. But 2, for the reason I just showed you, will make it converge. So it's either going to converge just at its center, or it's going to converge at some, at the center, and then some distance on either side of the center. All right. If this is the case, then this distance right here is called the radius of convergence. So basically, I know it's going to converge at the center. Is it also going to converge at numbers around the center? And if so, how far can I go from the center and still make it converge? The other option is that no matter what x you plug into it, it's going to converge everywhere. So this series is so inclined to converge that you can plug in anything you want, and you're still going to get a convergent result. So our job, the main skill from this section, is to figure out the radius of convergence to determine is it going to converge just at the center, at the center plus some radius, or everywhere, which would show up as a radius of infinity. So that's our next topic, finding R, the radius of convergence. The way we're going to do that is use the ratio test. But it's going to look slightly different than before. Let me pause for a second and get a good example up here. Okay, so take a second and copy down this example. This is um, a power series. It, it always helps to maybe list a few terms. If n is 1, I get x because we had x to the first over 1 squared. Um, if n is 2, you can see why they didn't start at 0, because that would have made the bottom 0. When n is 2, I get x squared over 4 plus x cubed over 9. So the coefficients in this case are 1 over our perfect squares. And that doesn't really, you don't really need to write those out to do this problem, but it kind of helps visualize and see what's going on. So my question is, what x's can I plug in 
that will make this thing converge and what X's can I plug in that will make it not converge? And like I said, we're going to use the ratio test. All right, so the ratio test says we're going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of the next term divided by the current term, all in absolute values. So what's my next term? My current term is x to the n over n squared, so my next term is x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 squared. I'm supposed to divide this by my current term. So I'm going to go ahead and flip over my current term and multiply it. So I'm going to call that n squared over x to the n. In our most recent test, there were some issues with canceling out. Um, you cannot cancel like, you know, this and this or anything like that. I saw that quite a few times, so just careful with your canceling. What I do have is an extra x on the top. And I have an n squared on top. And I've got an n plus 1 squared on the bottom. Okay, so usually in the ratio test, we get a numerical value and we say it converges if this numerical value is less than 1. What we do differently now is we take the limit as n goes to infinity. So as n's going to infinity, the n squared, the top is n squared and the bottom is n squared. So kind of ignore the x for just a second and look at the limit of the rest. The limit of the rest is the limit of just that, which is n squared over n squared, which means that basically that's 1. So this is absolute value of x. All right, so everything turns to 1. The x is not involved as n goes to infinity, so it just kind of hangs out. And, you know, if the, if the limit were 2, we would have 2 absolute value of x. If the limit were infinity, we'd still have infinity. If it were 0, we'd have 0. So, what is the conclusion of the ratio test? If the limit that we took is less than 1, then convergence. But what we used to do is just say we got a limit of 1 fifth. Well, I know it converges. So I got a limit of 2. I know it diverges. Now it depends on x. If the absolute value of x, which think of that as distance from x, is less than 1, then we have convergence, or excuse me, distance from 0. If our distance from 0 is less than 1, then we have convergence. So what that means in terms of answering this question is the radius of convergence equals 1. This particular series will converge if we plug in 0, which is the center, and it will converge if we plug in anything out to negative 1 and out to positive 1. All of these values give us convergence, kind of like the basic geometric one that I started with earlier. So that's how you find the radius of convergence. You take your limit with the ratio test, you set it less than 1, and then solve if you need to. Okay. One more quick example. I'm going to pause again. Be right. Okay, I wanted to give you an example that wasn't centered at zero because it's going to look a little different. I'm just going to go through this one quickly. What's the radius of convergence? Now, this thing is centered at two. So what we're looking for is does this thing converge only at two or does it converge at values close to two? Same thing's going to happen. The limit as n goes to infinity of the next term, which would be 3 times x minus 2 to the n plus 1, over the current term, which is 3 times x minus 2 to the n. Okay, so what you have is just when the 3's cancel and the extra x, plus one, uh, x minus 2 on top stays around, what we end up taking the limit of as n goes to infinity is just absolute value x minus 2. Now here's, this looks confusing, but it's actually easy. Ac absolute value of x minus 2, it doesn't matter what n does. This is just what it is. So this limit is x minus 2. If all your n's go away, then there's no n left to approach infinity. You're just left with absolute value of x minus 2. Here's the one, reason I wanted to show you one that wasn't centered at 0. If we are centered somewhere else, you don't need to isolate absolute value of x like we did right here. 
you need to isolate the absolute value of x minus 2 because this expression is distance from 2. And that's what we want to know. How far can I go from 2 and still converge? Well, that's going to happen as long as this distance from 2 is less than 1 because that's the conclusion of the ratio test. So what we know for this one is that it's going to converge at 2 because they all converge at their center. It's going to converge out to 1 and out to 3. So any values between 1 and 3, if you sub in to your original uh, power series, are going to create a convergent series. Anything outside of 1 to 3 is going to create a divergent series. Now, our next topic is going to deal with what about 1 and 3 themselves, and we'll deal with that in class and perhaps on our next video. But right now, we know the radius of convergence is 1. So we go out to 1 and out to 3, centered at 2. All right, so we're going to call that a day on our first section of power series stuff. Young out.